Hello, everyone. I am so excited about today. There's so many people. Now, I want to talk about the microscope. This is part one of a 101 series for how to use your microscope. The seeing the world through the lens of a microscope, it can be a truly transformative experience. Microscopy can evoke a sense of awe and wonder in children and adults as they realize that seemingly, you know, when you look at a leaf and you realize, wow, there's so many things you can't see with the naked eye without a microscope. There's extraordinary beauty and complexity and just really neat things you can see once you are able to see the microbes and the microscopic structures around us. A microscope is often one of the most expensive pieces of equipment that you can buy. When uh, actually this, the, today's discussion is for people whether they use the Real Science Odyssey series or not. But when I wrote Biology 2, one of the things I really wanted at the end, there's many microscope lessons in that course. One of the things I wanted was for people who had a, who bought a microscope and did those labs was for them to be able to really, and their children to really be able to use a microscope. It's expensive. So I wanted to help people get their money out of it. And today this one-on-one session is a part of that because it can really be beneficial for you to know how to use your microscope. So today is really gonna focus on the microscope, the parts of the microscope and how to use it. And I'm gonna give a little bit of detail about types of microscopes and um, the, the, the lighting, bright field versus dark field that, uh, and top down lighting, that sort of thing. The, and then next week I will be back to talk about making slides. I'll be going through all of the type of slides that commonly make, but I'm also going to go through how to make a thin slice. It's not that easy and how to, and when you should just buy pre-made, uh, slides which I actually don't think is very often. Um, okay, let us get started. Oh, just, just as a note, I had a couple of things I was asked to say. We have, if you don't already follow the Pandaya page, but you want to stay up on more workshops like today's, that is a good page to follow. We are hoping to do an entire series of um, workshops that for different areas of science there is a poll for those of you who are in the real science odyssey group there is a poll that is going to go up so you can help me figure out what the next workshop should be after these two microscope workshops uh, and if you feel free to join in if you are using our real science odyssey or thinking about using it all right let's get started percent slides. Sorry. I don't have to make this ah, perfect. Now I am going to turn my camera off. I frankly find it really distracting to have two different pictures going on. And I'm sure I feel like some of you probably do too. Okay. Can I make me smaller? Ah, perfect. So I will be off camera, then I will come back on camera. So don't worry. And if you have questions, I'm going to hold all questions until the end. You can write your questions down as they come up in the area that says comments. The microscope that most of you have is a compound microscope. I'm not going to go into too much detail now on this slide because I'll get back to the compound microscope uh, for the last slides in this talk. We're going to spend most of this week's workshop and next week's workshop using our compound microscope. This is a standard laboratory microscope used for observing small transparent specimens such as cells, tissue, and microorganisms. It uses what's called a bright field illumination technique. And if you've got your microscope near you, turn it on and you can see the light that comes on on the bottom and that it shines up. That is called a bright field illumination technique, where light from the source passes through 
some lenses and then passes through the specimen and into what's called the objective lens, creating a bright background with dark specimen details. The light passing through the specimen is important for you to be able to get a good view of the specimen. For that reason, the amount of light blocked by the specimen affects the view that you're getting. This is why it's important that you want to be making thin slices instead of thick slices. The thicker the slice that you make, the, hard, the more of the specimen, the more light that is blocked, actually. And we'll be looking at this next week. The next slide is a stereo microscope. And, oh no, the videos don't play, do they? Um, I am really sorry, I did not account for this. Sorry. Um, hold on. Uh, and I don't know how to make it play, so I will be um, uh, sharing in the comments once we, after I'm done talking, because this is a really fun one. So stereo microscope is a uh, microscope, also called a dissecting microscope. It has a wider, wider field of view, which is good because it has a lower magnification. The stereo microscope is used by dentists, biologists, for dissections, paleontologists. It's used in the field by archaeologists. Uh, it is, and the reason is, it is a, it is, the stereo microscope is for thicker specimens. The lighting is top-down lighting, so it doesn't have the light shining through the base. The light is part of the head of the microscope at the nose. So it's coming down and the view is through reflection. The video is really fun because it's a video that a dentist might take looking at tooth decay. And that's what we're looking at right here. So with the stereo microscope, you're not gonna see the individual bacteria, the microbes that are causing the tooth decay. But what you will see is the effect on this tooth of the decay. And yes, okay, so everybody watching this, this is why you want to do a really, really, really good job of brushing your teeth. <laughs> and that's what made this slide so much fun when I went looking for this. But again, it's got a lower magnification and a lower and a wider field of view. The lower magnification, if you're looking at a big sample, is okay. But if you want to see something like bacteria, again, you won't be able to. You will not be able to see, because of the video doesn't play, which I will fix next time, uh, next week, if I have any videos. This is a dark field microscope. If you spend much time on YouTube looking at live microbes, you will see views made with a dark field microscopy. A dark field microscope uses similar optical components to a compound microscope. However, a dark field microscope is not just a compound microscope that doesn't allow light through the aperture through, and I'm using some terms now uh, before I define them. Instead of a bright field of illumination, a dark field microscope uses a dark field illumination technique where the central light rays, so look at any light that's in your room and you see, so think about a light bulb that is round. And if you block out the center, if you've ever looked at a solar eclipse where the moon passes between Earth and the sun, obscuring the view of the sun, you get an idea of what happens with dark field uh, microscopy, that type of illumination. They, it's a circle that blocks out the central part of the light, but it lets some light out around the edges, just like uh, happens with the solar eclipse. And that then will illuminate your specimen. The results in a dark, a dark background with bright contrasting specimen details. So this is, we're seeing this here where we've got this dark background, but look at how bright the specimen is. It makes it easier to visualize fine details and structures that would be, that would otherwise be hard to see without staying using a bright field microscopy. A dark field microscope is this, this, it's an important distinction 
that dark field does a good job of illuminating unstained specimens. That's because stain kills. So if you were looking at yogurt and the a sample of yogurt and you were able to see the bacteria, if you put a drop of stain in it, and I encourage you to do it if you're curious, all of a sudden the bacteria will stop moving. The stain will have killed them. Uh, okay, this is... Um, this is used by microbiologists, but it's also used by anyone who has one and wants to see. I um, had one at one point and I used to look at, I would look at pond water with it because it was really fun to look at pond water with. Uh, I could get a re really good and detailed view of the little microbes moving around and how they moved. These days, um, Microscopes are also differentiated based on their optical setup for viewing specimens. So I thought I would share the pros and cons of each. This is a monocular. The benefits of a monocular are that it is less expensive. However, if you decide to attach a camera to your microscope, and these days almost everyone wants to uh, attach a camera to their microscope in order to view samples on their computer, this option is limited. As you can long, longer see the specimen directly through the lens. Looking through the lens, now it's, so you might think, well, I just wanna look at the sample on my computer all the time. Well, the issue with that is that you actually get a better view looking through the lens, the, the eyepiece right here. Now, some users with the monocular also find it hard to look at for longer periods of time. And then we have the binocular microscope. I prefer the binocular microscope. Uh, I have actually never owned a trinocular, but uh, of between monocular and binocular, uh, or and binocular, I prefer it. I find it easier to view through when you don't have a camera in it. And with two eyepieces, you have better depth perception. Depth perception is the ability to perceive distance to objects, and it's a major factor in perceiving the world in three dimensions. And I think that is important to think about if you're deciding what kind of head you want on a microscope before you purchase it, because you definitely want to be able to get a good, clear view in three dimensions of the organisms that you're looking at uh, and the, of the specimens that you're looking at. A binocular will be more expensive. Uh, that's a negative. Another negative for a binocular, if, like me, you have a camera in one of the eyepieces, it basically functions as a monocular with limited depth perception. And then there's the trinocular. The trinocular is, uh, the negative is that it's the most expensive, but it's the most versatile with a camera slot. It has all the benefits of the binocular plus the camera. Now, the camera, however, it, it, so it, so these days you can go on all sorts of places, but Amazon is a common place for people to go to buy microscopes. And you can get a trinocular that's not that much more expensive than a binocular. The issue, or a monocular, the issue is the resolution of the camera. So let's talk about the resolution of the camera, because that's actually a, something that's really important. And it is, uh, well, what makes it very expensive. I just upgraded my camera from five megapixels to 18 megapixels, and the difference in view was huge, and the difference in price was too. These days, most users consider a camera and a computer important add-ons when using a microscope. I know that some people also have a phone attachment. So a way to attach your phone is uh, so that you can take pictures on your microscope uh, and onto the, uh, and then have that show up on your computer. If you're going to need to see the next slide, the, how big of a difference the camera resolution 
uh, the impact it has on the view. For this reason, I recommend you look at the specimen with and without using the camera. Uh, now, I want to remind you that even with an 18 megapixel camera, the best view you're going to get from your microscope using your microscope is, let's go back to here, is if your eye is on this eyepiece. That is your best view. Okay, so let's talk pixels. Here, I just want to, we've got two megapixels, 16 plus megapixels, and five megapixels. What does all this mean? The term resolution, what we're looking at, so this is a, I'm sorry, this is a picture that it, we're looking at at three different resolutions, three different megapixels. The term resolution, when used to describe a digital camera image, refers to the size of the image that the camera produces. It usually, it's usually expressed in terms of megapixels, or in other words, millions of pixels. Now, a pixel is a dot or a square. And if you look, you can see the two megapixel, you can actually see little teeny boxes on the side. These edges aren't smoothed. You can see the squares. At five megapixels, it's still fuzzy, but the squares, the edges, you're not looking at squares anymore. You're now looking at smoothed edges. So in the same amount of space in this, two, at two megapixels, you have millions of less dots and squares than you do at five megapixels. This is smaller. I'm trying to make this really simple. Uh, Hopefully, I'm not making it more confusing. You can see, um, and so it affects because you've got larger squares in this issue compared in in this area compared to this area. It's going to the squares are going to show as you can see. Once you get this is 16 plus megapixels. Once you get to this resolution, you get a much smoother image. Now, I, again, I don't want to go into great detail about this other than to tell you what you can see in the picture, that the higher the number of megapixels, the better the resolution, and the better the resolution, the more clearly you will see the image. I wanted this picture to fill the entire screen, but let me tell you, so, so pixels are measured in area in the amount of two-dimensional space they take up. So when I paint this camera so that it spread across the entire slide, I decreased the number of megapixels and made every single part of the uh, of this image blurry. So the way so I wanted you to see that at 60 megapixels it was pretty clear, but then when I uh, changed the resolution by spreading it across the slide, I um, I actually made it. Fuzzy. So uh, that's why we're looking at it like this. Next week, I'm going to be showing you the different views using a 5 megapixel camera and an 18 megapixel camera, and you'll be able to see clearly how much difference that makes. The reason that's important is that if you're going to use a camera, you just need to know that a big part of how clear the image is on your computer is going to be determined by the resolution of the camera you're using. And the reason this is important is you can get a deal on the microscope, but if your microscope comes with a camera, the camera is general, it's the camera's a camera at a higher resolution is actually fairly expensive. All right, now let's get on to the parts of the, does anybody remember what kind of microscope this is? It's a compound microscope. Now I should tell you that most of the pieces in this microscope would be the same if you had a dark field microscope. It's when you have a stereo microscope that it is different. Now the stereo microscope, you see as I go through, 
the stereo microscope is would have its lighting up here so that it shined on the specimen. Because with the stereo microscope, the specimen, which goes on the stage here, would be too thick to do for light to shine through. Okay. Now let's get to the compound microscope. Let's start with the eyepiece. Now, if you have a microscope, please follow along. Let's turn this into a learning lesson. If you feel that you already know most of what I've been showing you so far, yay. You already know the parts of this expensive piece of science equipment, and it's going to help when you use it. And when you go to, when you're taking biology in college, it will also help you. This is the eyepiece. The eyepiece is the piece that you look through right here. Number eight. This is where the ocular lens is. The very first lens. This ocular lens usually magnifies. Up, uh, I've never used a microscope that the ocular lens was not 10 times. That means that even without these other lenses called the objective lenses, I'll get to in a minute, the ocular lens magnifies what you're looking at 10 times. This is the eyepiece tube. The tube connecting connects the eyepiece to the nose. And you might think that it's just a tube, but it contains optical components in it that transmit the image from the objective lenses to the ocular lenses. This is the nose piece. The nose piece is a rotating structure that holds the objective lenses. It allows you to switch between different magnifications. Now, if you haven't done so already, turn your nose piece so that the, um, let the objective lens that says four on it that magnifies four times is pointing down to the stage. Play around and use your nose piece. Okay, now we're at the objective lenses. The, uh, these are a set of interchangeable lenses located on a, a rotating turret on the rotating nose piece below the eyepiece. So eyepiece, some uh, pieces that help with you with magnification, the nose piece, the objective lens. The objective lens has a set of interchangeable lenses located, um, I'm sorry, the objective lenses provide levels of magnification commonly four times, 10 times, 40 times, and 100 times. Some microscopes have different. Uh, now just look at yours, four times, 10 times, 40 times, and 100 times. Okay. Here is the stage. This picture shows a uh, stage. This is where the specimen goes. These stage clips, if you want to move the sample, you will need to move the sample. As you're gonna see when I show you how to use a, the microscope, some stages, I have a mechanical stage. I love my mechanical stage. If you are looking at a microscope, I encourage you to look for one with a mechanical stage, especially if you are working with younger um, children. It makes it so much easier to move the specimen and look at different parts. If you're looking at live samples, it's so much easier to follow a, an organism as it moves across this, the, um, your, the area where you're viewing. This is the arm. The arm can be used to pick up your microscope and carry it, but, uh, and so your hand should go there and under the base whenever you lift your microscope. Remember, this is a, there's some, these, these lenses, if they get damaged, um, you will never see <laughs> anything as well again through it. Uh, the stage clips, I'll also show you my, the a mechanical um, uh, stage has a much nicer, um, it's not really a stage clip, I'm not sure what they, I'm not sure what the technical name is for what I have, but it's nicer than the stage clips that are showing. 
Here is a diaphragm. The diaphragm is a device that controls the amount of light entering the condenser. The condenser is right here, okay? If you, uh, adjusting the diaphragm helps regulate the contrast and brightness of the image. Located beneath the stage is the condenser lens. It focuses and concentrates the light onto the specimen. It can be adjusted to control the amount and angle of light reaching the specimen. A condenser lens focuses light onto the specimen and the objective lens magnifies the image, allowing for high resolution and detailed observations. Uh, somebody asked, and so I'm just going to, in one of the Facebook groups, or in the RSO Facebook group, and I just want to point out, the diaphragm and the condenser lens, they are not the same piece. A microscope magnifies by shining light from the light source that is in the, um, at the, on your base, up th it through the diaphragm, and you can of change how much light goes through it and it shines up into the condenser lens which focuses the light through the specimen that is on the stage. Here are the coarse and fine focus knobs. We're about to play around with those in a minute and we will really uh, talk more about those next week as we are looking at specimens with uh, through, you'll be able to see through my microscope because uh, I will be sharing the view from my microscope camera. Here is the illuminator. The illuminator is a fancy name for a light source usually located beneath the stage that provides illumination for the specimen. And then here is the base. These are the main parts of the compound microscope. Depending on the type and complexity of the microscope, there can be additional features. Now, I want to start my camera and then I am going to change. See how easily this goes. Yes. Okay. Now you should see the setup that I've got. I've got this, uh, I've got a camera on its side. Um, and really, I'm, I'm really sorry that you also have this behind you but I need to be able to see myself on the, uh, as I go through the, how to use the microscope. Now, when I started explaining the microscope, I started at the top and went down. Now I'm gonna start at the base and go up. So if you're, if you have a microscope, let's turn the microscope on, okay? Here's our light source. It's actually really important. So one of the first things that I do when I look at my microscope, and I do not have a rag on me, how clean is that? Now I keep my microscope in a fairly fancy case. Uh, I'm more than happy to share with anyone. It uh, looks like a little trunk. I'll share it later. And so it doesn't usually get that dusty, but you want to make sure that the parts are clean. So you don't want any dust. You're looking, dust is microscopic. Uh, it's not, it's really small. So I want you to think you're looking at things that are smaller than dust. Because you can see dust with your eye, some parts of it, some pieces you can't. You don't want your view to be affected by dust. It's another reason why you want really clean slides. Okay, now. Let's all, so we can change the amount of light that goes through. Now you might think to yourself, why wouldn't I always have it on the brightest? Well, the same thing with dark field versus bright field. Sometimes you actually can get a better view if the light, if you don't have quite as much light shining through. But you do need light shining through the specimen. Again, which is a reason that your specimen needs to be transparent. Okay, we're going to go up from the base right here. Here, I want you to look at this. This is the beauty of a mechanical stage. Mechanical stage moves back and forth. And then this piece is moving left and right. And this is what I have. So it's nice little piece that grabs the slide. I love it. 
there are, it's just one of the things that I, um, <laughs> I consider essential. All right. Now, uh, I'm sorry, I jumped out to the slides, I'll, to the stage. I'll get down to the diaphragm and condenser lens in a minute. One of the things you'll notice here, I can see, got numbers. These can be really nice. They're not as important at home, but if you want, are keeping a lab notebook, it could be really nice to write details about where you saw the specimen. It can be helpful if you're looking at a larger sample to write down where you saw something so that you can go back to look at it again if you want to. Let's say you were looking at a cell and you were going to draw a view of a cell. <coughs> and at 25, uh, 30, you saw a good cell to draw, but you wanted to keep looking because maybe you'd see a better one. You could write down 2530 and then you would know to go back to it. This isn't obviously not as useful with live specimens that are moving around and those are so much fun to look at. Okay, one of the things I want you to notice right now, I've got four times looking down. Always have the lowest magnification, the lowest, the shortest, it's really not about the magnification at this point because I'm not looking through it. Always have the shortest eyepiece down as you are doing things on this stage because it's you're less likely to damage the lens in the eye, in, in the, I'm sorry, objective lens. All right. Now I can control the amount of light. There's a little teeny knob right here and I can move that. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to, again, I'm going to do this. Look, I'm opening this and now I'm going to close this. Sort of interesting because it's the opposite of a dark field because what it's really doing is it's shrinking the point so that it's <coughs> focused in the center. Okay. And then there is the lens that is right there. That's the condenser lens. So diaphragm here controlling. It's just a little circular piece that opens and closes and it changes how much light can go through that lens. Okay. All right. Now I can move my stage up and down. I've got my stage all the way down. As you put slides on, take slides off, that is how you should have your stage. This should just be, and when you put your microscope away, I recommend storing it with the stage as low as it can go. Here are the knobs. This is called the course. In, on, now yours might be two separate knobs. Uh, either way, the larger of the two knobs is the called the course focus knob. It focuses. It's not if once it's good for um, getting a view so that you can say, oh, I'm starting to get a view. It's starting to get clear, but it's the fine focus knob. This just moves, the fine focus knob moves uh, the stage at a, in smaller gradations and in, in smaller amounts than the coarse focus knob. Okay. And then here is my nose piece. And it's very simple just to move these. You want to make sure that you keep these lenses clean. I bring that up because it's not just kids that this happens to. You're going to get stuff. You're going to put your, uh, you're going to raise the stage and the, the lens is going to be one of these um, objective lenses that's longer, is going to touch the slide and the next thing you know, liquid's squinching out and you've got liquid or on your, um, on the lens, or you 
have an oil immersion and you're looking with oil. I keep, oh, I always have a funky, an old funky t-shirt that has been washed so many times that it's soft. That is my absolute favorite slide cleaning um, piece of cloth. So, and that's my favorite thing to use to clean these. I've tried expensive lens wipes or even not as expensive. Uh, it's not worth the cost. So just find some old t-shirt your kids have outgrown or it's got a hole in it, and, you know, and, and then use that. Um, so I always have a couple of one, one or two of those on hand. Now, let's look at this. So remember I said that the objective lens, this is 10 times. This is some very simple math that we're going to do here. This magnifies 10 times and this magnifies... Oh, I want you to be able to see it four times, four times 10. So looking through this lens and this lens 40 times. And sometimes this is the best thing. Like if you're looking at, and I encourage you to do this, if you are looking at the wings of a butterfly that you found on the ground outside, or you're looking at a fly or a spider's little teeny ends of their legs, which is I love to do. Often, 40 times is enough of magnification. This is 10 times, 10 times 10. When you look through this lens, you're looking, you're magnifying something 100 times. The view is magnified 100 times. And then this is 40 times 10, 400. And then 100 times 10 is a thousand time magnification. We're going to talk in more detail about this next week, but every time you increase the magnification, you decrease the amount of area you're looking at of the specimen that you are looking at. And it's really much easier to see this using a slide. Okay the lenses, the nose piece. This is nice and sturdy. Now, again, I, don't, I do not recommend picking your microscope, even if you got a super deal on it, up just by this. Always carry your microscope this way. This microscope that you're looking at, I have had this microscope for years and years and years. I had a monocular that I actually donated to someone um as well and i take good care of my microscope now you might think that this is a microscope that's only been used by an adult but this has been used by my grandkids this has been used by my son all the way through homeschooling him just take really good care of it and it works that's one of the things i love about a microscope microscopes that are well cared for will last you a long time okay and then you will see this. Have you ever wondered what this is? These numbers here? Well, those numbers are for something called diopter adjustment. This allows you to customize the viewfinder so that you can see a clear focused image for the way without using eyeglasses or contact lens. So if when you're looking at the microscope and you're trying to, one of the mistakes that people will make is they will be trying, instead of using the fine or the coarse focus knobs, they will use this. Why is that a mistake? Well, it's a mistake because if you have looked at something and it was really clear, then this is well adjusted for your eye. <laughs> and you don't want to change this too much because you could actually affect the clear clarity of the view just by making it so you're not so your eye doesn't work as well when it's looking through this. So be careful about that. Now, the reason that I wanted to um, have a camera today, uh, even though I'm not going to use it at all, is I just wanted to show you. So if you have a microscope that I do that you are repurposing to take a can to use a camera. This is the piece that you're going. It's so easy, but I probably can make you nervous. You are going to 
use, you're going to take this piece out and slide this in. This actually, the camera screws on. This came with the camera. We're going to slide it in. Now I'm going to spend more time with this tomorrow. You want to be really careful how if you let this get dirty. I never, ever, ever will have this where it is not all these lenses. So I have added, this is going to be a 10 times magnification. I have added this lens to this. And if I let it, but I'm going to slide this in and out so this can get dirty and it's not quite, I, I just, you don't want to scratch this. Um, I guess I don't know. This this has been cleaned many times, so I would hope this is as easy to clean. I think that is, let me just go through. I think that's everything. Okay. Next week, slide making basics. I am going to, do we have any questions, uh, Charlene? Let me see. Put myself back on. Okay, so we do not have any questions. Well, then that was how to use your microscope 101. Very basic tutorial. If you watch this and you're like, she is really getting basic and you have kids, this would be a great video for your kids to see with their microscope as they become familiar with it. And that's really what I wanted. I really wanted a microscope tutorial that was that basic and that simple. Microscopes are something I get so many questions about. Now, if you're in the market for purchasing a microscope or a camera, you feel free to tag me where in where you're watching this and I can help you. I'm not a microscope salesperson, uh, but I can help you find a microscope that does what you want. Things that I would consider essential, frankly, I like a microscope, just, just in case some of you are here for that. Let me see. Okay. Things that I like. I like a microscope that plugs in. Okay. I think, you know how as your battery life starts to go down, some microscopes have a battery. Uh, it's You can transport a microscope that uses a battery in, for the lighting in the base more places, but you're, when the battery isn't at 100%, it can be hard to know. And that's going to, to know that, you're, that you don't have the light that you should, um, that you don't have maximum light. I, again, like I told you, mechanical stage, love it. And then binocular, if you're going to use a camera, because as anybody who shows up with a microscope next week will see with me, the um, view is going to be much more clear. Okay, that's it. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else as you look for a microscope. All right, everyone. I will hopefully see you next week. If you've got any questions or comments that come up between then and now, please let me know. Just tag me in whatever group you watch this in. And if you want to choose what basic science thing I'm going to cover in October. Go over to the Real Science Odyssey group and participate in the poll or make a suggestion yourself. You can actually comment in. If you're watching this video, you can make a comment and make a suggestion. I would like Blair to talk about whatever. Um, and then if you want to be kept abreast of the video series that are coming up when the events go live, when these Facebook uh, events go live or when they're going to happen, please uh, follow the Pandaya Press page. Happy science, everyone. I hope that you love using your microscope and that you are successful doing it.